Hello everyone, this is Chantal from glutenfreecooking123.com and today I'm going to show you how to make cauliflower hummus. This is the same basically as making hummus but it, instead we are going to use some cauliflower that we're going to roast and it's going to be delicious and low carb. So let's do it. So you're going to see me in this shirt for like three videos, one after the other because I'm filming these videos in the same day. Uh, right here I have this pan, now it's not dirty, it's just stained. And I'm going to line it with some foil, just for easy cleanup. You could also use a silicone mask, but because I have my oven on broil, I don't want to use a silicone mat because I'm also filming a separate recipe and I'm going, I'm doing bubble and nuge for that which requires broiling. So I'm just going to use the heat in the oven and bake these under the egg plants. Now to bake these you can put them on 400 Fahrenheit and you're going to bake them until they're tender, depends how long it's going to take them maybe 15 to 30 minutes, it depends how big you cut up the cauliflower. So I'm going to cut up these cauliflowers into about bite-sized pieces or just small enough for them to bake quickly. Cut up that part just to make it easier for me to cut this. In fact, let me measure this cauliflower head just to see how much it weighs. I should have measured it with this because that's usually how you buy it, but that's okay. And this is one pound, 1.7 pounds. So if I change that into pounds and ounces, it would be one pound and 11 ounces. Actually, I'm just going to rinse it, give it a quick rinse first, and then chop it. Save this, because I like this part. <laughs> I'm cutting them about this big. And we're just going to line them on the pan. So now I'm going to drizzle these cauliflower florets with about three tablespoons of olive oil and I would have also sprayed them with, whoops, <laughs> that was not drizzling, <laughs> with some uh, uh, cooking spray, but I don't have that right now. So I'm just going to use olive oil and I'm going to try to coat them as much as I can. And the reason why I like to use the cooking spray with the olive oil is because it makes sure they're evenly coated because sometimes you can't really coat them that well with the olive oil. But what the olive oil does is it adds a great flavor to the cauliflower florets. And you could bake them at 375 degrees or 400 degrees Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 30 minutes. I'd say probably at 375 because you don't want them to burn. And I also have this recipe up on my blog and I will link it in the description box below. They're actually pretty well coated with olive oil because I did add a little extra and three tablespoons. Okay, I'm going to spread them evenly and then we're going to bake them in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes or until they're tender, they're slightly golden brown and you want them to be soft because the softer they are, the better they blend and you, will, you won't have a grainy texture in your uh, cauliflower hummus and that's what we're going to do right now. Take them and put them in the oven. So I just took the cauliflower out of the oven and let me show you how it looks like. And 
It's pretty soft. Still a little crunchy. Of course, it's not going to be. You could also, I suppose, you could steam it if you want. But the nice thing about baking it is that it adds that extra flavor that steaming doesn't provide. And you also lose a lot of nutrients when you do steam it because a lot of the liquids that's in the cauliflower is going into the steaming water. So I'm going to take one because I like <laughs> I like cauliflowers. Mm. So I'm not going to follow the exact same recipe on my blog just because I don't have the same quantities of cauliflower as I mentioned on my blog because this was a smaller head of cauliflower. So I'm going to improvise on <laughs> the amounts that I'm going to be adding of the same ingredients but just different amounts. And I'm going to put the cauliflower in here. Into the food processor. And I'm going to add about a couple cloves of garlic. You could also add pre-minced garlic. I like fresh just because I like how it tastes better. I'm making a mess everywhere. Grab my cutting board. And these are small cloves of garlic, so I'm gonna put maybe about four because I love garlic. You don't have to put that many. You can put less. But I love garlic in these dishes. I love garlic in general. <laughs> I'm just slicing the tips off so that you don't have that hard part in there. my hummus video you would know that before I add the tahini I always stir it because you don't know if it's going to if it well it might it because it usually separates the oil separates from the sesame paste and that's just sesame oil <laughs> so how much did I say to put tahini in the recipe so for four, four cups of cauliflower, you would need a half a cup and two tablespoons of tahini. I don't know if I have that much. Let's see, I might add half a cup of tahini, I think. This is a quarter cup. So I'm going to add another quarter cup. So that's half a cup. I guess I did add <laughs> almost as much, but you know, the tahini and the lemon juice and all that are going, over you know, boiling pot over here, <laughs> are going to mix in all together, thicken up and all that, and the um, cauliflower is going to be adding the flavor and also the thickness. And we're going to add a quarter cup of olive oil, almost a quarter cup. I'm not going to add the full quarter cup just because I'm not adding as much tahini. A quarter cup of lemon juice. I am going to add the quarter cup because I like it sour. I'm not adding as much tahini. I'm going to reduce the amount of water. This way it is not as it's not going to turn out liquidy. And I'm going to add some salt. I said two teaspoons of salt for the amount I was I had in there, but I'm gonna add a teaspoon and a half, and then if I need more, I will add more. And some water. I'm not going to add a full quarter cup, like I said, I'm just gonna 
going to add a little, oops, a little less than a quarter cup. Not going to add all of it all at once. And then we are going to process it. I'm going to check on it now, see if it's creamy enough for me. Now it, it is a little grainier than a than hummus that's made with chickpeas. But like I said, if you want it to be super smooth, you could steam it until they're super soft and then you could proceed to this uh, step. Mm. It is very thick even though it's warm, so I think I'm going to add a little bit more water. And I would like a tiny bit more salt, but it's really good already. And as usual with these, with these uh, dishes, they always taste better when they're colder. <laughs> when they're colder. And they also will thicken up as they cool. So if they are a little on the runnier side, don't be afraid. When you put them in the fridge, they're going to be a little thicker. That looks good. Oh, look at that. Look at the thickness. Let me bring it closer to you guys. See how thick it's holding on to the, the spoon. And like I said, it's a tiny bit grainier than the chickpea hummus. But you really can't tell that much of a difference in the taste. It tastes very similar. It tastes awesome. And you could also add, if you want to make it a little spicy, you could add some cayenne pepper to it maybe. And just like with hummus, you could just do variations of um, different, um, just like chickpea hummus, you could, I find, I, I think it's weird to say chickpea hummus because in my mind chickpeas and hummus are the same thing because hummus is chickpeas in Arabic. <laughs> Anyways, you could add different vari variations to it, you know, like roasted pepper flavor or um, or anything that you could think of or maybe spicy flavor, anything that you could think of. So this is it and also you serve it the same way. You could make a wrap with it or whatever. It would be a low carb wrap for you, which is awesome. These are, it's a a great option for people who are looking for a lower carb option. Now let me see here the sesame seeds, the sesame, the tahini sauce, how much it has, how much carbs. Okay, so two tablespoons have six grams of fiber and three grams of, uh, sorry, six grams of carb and three grams of fiber, so three grams of carbs basically or two tablespoons. Now you're probably not going to be eat, eating more than two tablespoons when you do eat this because you're not going to eat it all in one sitting. You're probably going to be sharing it with other people. You might be putting it on wraps or as a dip or whatever it is that you choose to eat it as. And uh, yeah, so it's delicious. <laughs> I'm going to plate it up and uh, take a picture and be right back. This is it. I don't want to spill olive oil, but it looks so pretty. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. Oh no, it's messing up my chives. I'm gonna have to fix that again because I need to take a picture of this to put it up on the blog. So you guys can find this recipe up on my blog as usual, the rest of the recipes with all the videos that I make. And uh, I will put the link for this recipe in the description box below. I'll also be linking the hummus recipe if you want to try that too. And I might link it in the art card somewhere in this video. You might see it before. <laughs> and um, so if you guys like this video, hit the like button. And if you are new to this channel and you want to see more of these videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you can receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos. And don't forget to share these videos with your friends and family so that they can also learn how to cook gluten-free and Mediterranean food. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next episode.